We're talking about spirituality. We're talking about the new awakening. And rarely, I'm listening to many people, to many teachers, rarely somebody is talking about sex. And very few people are actually using the sexual energy for our spiritual growth. It's either you have sex or you meditate. And mostly when you meditate, you think about sex or something. <laughs> so these two, there seem to be these two opposite sides, which don't really find together. And talking about sex, all of us, we are still quite... There is a feeling about shame, of guilt even, of being... This is too intimate, I'm, I don't talk openly about this, it's just between us. But uh, one thing, it's very helpful that you can sex, bring sex down to a level where it's quite normal and ordinary and simple and not this big mystery anymore. Like I remember when I was a kid, um, I knew something was happening in the bedroom of my parents. But nobody talked to me about it. Nobody said, this is, this is going on. Of course, my parents didn't know better. But from very early on in, in this whole society, sex is this mystery. And uh, how to do it, um, uh, how to achieve it, what to achieve, what do we want to get out of sex. And one thing we try to do in the groups is bring people to the situation where they can talk about sex in the very normal terms, like you talk about cooking. No, I bring 200 grams of this and 100 grams of this and I mix it together and this and this is the result. So if people can talk more freely about sex, like I put my penis in the vagina and this and this happens and uh, when I come this and this happens, when I lose my erection this and this is happening and we can talk about uh, feeling that are connected with it in very normal terms, I think this is a great step forward in using sexual energy for our spiritual growth. And what is overlooked uh, what I see is <clears throat> that we don't realize how much our sexual energy is connected with the energy in our daily life. Usually, we try to be conscious here and there, we, like, uh, we talk about acceptance, we talk about uh, relaxation, we talk about being in the present moment, and one very precise, concrete way I can practice this is in sex. So, all I try to do is more conscious, being more conscious in sex. Whatever I do, uh, Tantra always says, Tantra denies nothing but transforms everything. So it doesn't matter what I do, but how I do it. And this is the whole secret. And many people are not aware the way they behave in sex, their sexual behavior, is connected with the rest of the expression of that same energy. Because you see, we just have one energy. We don't have different energies. And the sexual energy is in the basement of our energy system, and mostly the basement is pretty dark. So all we're trying to do is bringing more consciousness there, bringing more awareness there of what we are doing, becoming aware of our patterns, of our conditioning, so to speak. And we come, become aware there, and many things just fall in place by itself, automatically. I don't need to search for the higher. I start with the lower, and from there everything uh, can develop by itself. And that's really the whole work that we are doing. Really ad uh, addressing all different issues, the whole process, everything that happens in sex. Try to address it, and the more we address it, the more I become aware of actually what I'm doing, how is my behavior, my sexual behavior. The way I'm touching, the way I'm looking at a woman, the way I'm, I'm uh, inside a woman, it's all the same, it's just with more awareness, with more consciousness. It's very simple, there's no big secret to it. But awareness doesn't come for free. It takes, it takes it's a certain effort, it's a, it takes my energy, I need to be there. If you look at sex in general, Conventional sex, we're very ambitious in sex. We want it bigger, we want it greater, we want it more sensational, we want it uh, cosmic, we want it universal. I don't know what, but... Um, so there's always a goal. And in conventional sex, it's maybe the goal of a great orgasm. In so-called spiritual sex, is the experience of something higher or... Uh, the connection to the, to the whole, to the universe, to the existence. Um, and our approach is really to bring it down 
to the normal level. What is happening now? How can I be more present in the sexual act? How can I, can I be more present as a man with woman? And how can I be more present in woman? And that is the whole secret. And that's also then we're talking about what, uh, what it means to be a man, actually. Because the question is, what does it mean? There needs to be authority, he needs to be strong, he needs to be a provider. He needs to know exactly what to do in the right time and all these qualities that we give to men. It's just on the periphery. For me, what it means to be a man is just the capacity to be present. As long as I'm present with woman and in woman, there the alchemy between the male and the female can happen because usually the men are ahead of themselves. They want something out of it. They want to either satisfy the woman, satisfy themselves, be a great lover, or, but nobody is actually really here. And it's just the thing, if I'm one split second ahead of myself, I'm still ahead of myself. Look, the whole thing is very simple. Um, we do give some love keys where that, that help us to enter more into the present moment. For example, while you make love, you can look into the eyes of your partner, uh, you can touch them with more awareness. Um, you can talk about your feelings, talk about what's happening in your heart, what's happening in your body, and that immediately brings you more in the present, present moment. You can start breathing, not any technique, just to remember that you breathe while you make love. And uh, there's different little things that can help us into the present moment. Important is that while I'm doing this journey, I'm discovering what is my so-called conditioning. We think, because everybody is doing it in the same way, more or less, facing the same problem, more or less, we think that's just the way it is. If we really have a look, if we start becoming more present, we will realize that this is our conditioning, that it's been taught to us centuries, generations before, through our parents, and all conditioning is, is uh, unconscious. So we are not aware that we are conditioned. Also, we think, you know, in sex we are very involved. And that's why I think we are really present, but it, that is not the truth. Being involved does not necessarily mean we are present. So, little things can help us to be more here. Mm. Going more slowly means going more consciously, moving more consciously in women. Um, as I said, look into, look into each other's eyes, then you really know the, with whom you are making love not going into fantasy, but actually staying here, uh, touching with more awareness, and all these things can help us here. The biggest conditioning, or I'd say the biggest, biggest misunderstanding, that we have to get something out of sex, that we want to reach somewhere. Because for most people, reaching an orgasm, that's the thing. If we don't have one of those, either man or woman, we mostly think something didn't work quite well something was wrong or we didn't have the experience that we expected. So that whole orgasm thing that we identify sex often with orgasm, that uh, brings us out of the present moment and even if it's just a, a second. Uh, you see, it's very subtle, that goal orientation in sex. You might not think about orgasm all the time, but in a more subtle layer, you're more interested in the next penetration and not so much in this one, because the next one brings you closer to your goal. And this is like, uh, this is very subtle, and the, the thing is, it's in every cell of our body. And uh, we are geared towards, we can't just switch it off and say, now uh, I'm becoming, I'm just, I just want to be present. It's the same like if I would say, okay, I have enough of this today, I want to be enlightened. It's not working like this. I have to slowly, slowly discover what is my conditioning? What is my habits? And through identifying it and approaching it, uh, this conditioning, I'm not, so, I'm not so identified with my habits, with uh, what I think I like or I don't like. And through disidentifying, I get a distance and slowly I can see the conditioning. But first I have to uh, go into it. I really believe that, first of all, we are the body. That is our starting point. Of course, we are more than the body. But uh, I have to start 
with the beginning and the body is my beginning. I have to honor this body, I have to respect it, I have to love it, I have to bring life and consciousness in there. And from there I can, be, I can go beyond the body. But I have to start where I am and I have to, to realize that this wonderful gift that is given to me through existence allows me to perceive the world, to sense the world, and through that, that perception I can go beyond the body, but I have to start with this one. And this one is always here. And you know many people, um, you hear all the teachers and say, the secret is to be here now. And, and then I ask myself, this is a great idea, how do I be here now? And for me the easiest way to be here now is in the body, because the body is always here. Um, and just take a breath, I'm here. My thoughts are never here. My, my mind is either in the past or in the future. So all I need to do is very simple, come back to this body and I'm in a state, and maybe just for a few seconds where I can experience the present moment. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.